What is up, Waffle Gang? I do hope you are well. <laughs> My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more r slash am I the butthole. If you'd like to skip the initial waffle, timestamps are in the description and along the timeline below. But if you are new here, please consider hitting the like, the subscribe, and maybe that notification bell too, as it really helps us out. And yesterday we had two new members over on YouTube. You know I love it. And we had broken queer but fighting. Yes, it happened. Thank you so, so much. And we also had Lazari join us. Thank you so, so much for your support. And for everyone, for everyone, for taking your time out of your day to be here, spending 20 minutes, listening to a video, getting involved in Discord, Twitter, YouTube, everywhere, means the absolute world. And let's crack on with today's stories. Much love, guys. And our first story comes from Kondorima. Am I the arsehole for banning my former mother-in-law from my house because she keeps showing up and letting herself in? My former mother-in-law is 52 years old and I am 32 years old. Back when I was 23, I got my then girlfriend pregnant. We married soon after and she gave birth to our little girl. Two years after my wife got extremely sick and passed soon after, leaving me with our daughter. I decided to move several states away back to my own parents as I work a lot and my parents volunteered to help me with my daughter. This went on for a while until I made a good promotion and had enough saved up to get my own house half an hour away from my parents. And since then, watching my daughter during the day while I'm at work is split between the nanny I hired and my parents. Before you think I am taking advantage, my parents insist on watching her. My daughter is eight now in case you wonder and I generally work eight till six. My former mother-in-law decided to move into the town I live because she wants to be close to her granddaughter slash my daughter. I initially had no issues with this. After all, my wife was her only child and my daughter her only grandchild. I only started to have an issue when she actually moved. Since she moved here, she was at my house pretty much all day, including when I got home after work and the weekends. She would even be there when my daughter was at school and no one was home to clean. After having multiple conversations and arguments with her, where I stated I was of the opinion her behavior was inappropriate and she was crossing boundaries, she had finally toned it down for a while. However, slip-ups were and are common. Last week was the last straw for me. Since the past year and a half, I've started dating again and met a woman. However, due to corona, we have not been able to spend much time together. With everything open up here, I invited her over after asking my parents to watch my daughter. When we were fooling around on the couch, my ex-mother-in-law let herself in, of course, without calling, knocking, or asking, and then proceeded to lose her shit and accuse me of cheating and disrespecting my deceased wife. I finally had enough. I went over, snatched my key from her, forced her out of my home, and told her she is no longer welcome in my house. She really has no one else, and several people, including my parents, have weighed in, asking me to change my mind. I am not sure if I'm the arsehole here. Now, of course, you're not going to be the arsehole here, but I always find like mother-in-law stories quite interesting and the family dynamic based around them. But my major question for this one is, why does she have a key anyway? And she was totally wrong to snap at you at the same time about having like cheating on the deceased wife. I mean, it's been seven years. Some people, that's not enough time to grieve. Other people's it is. As we always say, people grieve in a whole bunch of different ways and that's absolutely fine. He's clearly grieved and probably still grieving, but he's ready to move on with his life now, which I think is absolutely acceptable. Seven years, man. I think mother-in-law needs to take a step back and realize he wants to move on with his life and find some happiness again. Not that he hasn't got it with his daughter, but you know what I'm talking about here. However, also personally in this story, I'm not sure. You're definitely not the arsehole, but I'm not sure if I'd cut... Um, mother-in-law out of your life I'm sure she's losing her shit I think having a, a an open and honest conversation about your grieving process you moving on not that she deserves it but I think it would just balance things out I don't for me this wouldn't be something I'd be able to cut someone out of my life just like that with especially the grandmother of my child and I'm sure people will see it differently and think otherwise which is absolutely fine as well that's what we're all about here but for me I don't think I'd want to cut her out just because of this right now. Unless she wants to die on that whole hill of, of what she's saying right now, I think. Then I would consider cutting her out if she isn't going to change her ways and, you know, and respect your privacy and things like that. But let's have a look at some of the comments to see what they say. So we're going to start off with Isaac Endler saying, Not the arsehole because of three main reasons. One, this is your house. Two, this is your kid. Three, this is your life. 
You lost your wife. I'm genuinely sorry for your loss. You grieved, you accepted your loss, and then you moved on. You are not cheating on anyone, and you are well within your right to not allow her into your property. Keep her away from your kid. Her reaction tells me she'd try and push her mindset of you cheating onto your daughter. Just remember that you are the parent and that you have your own life. And Lord Yeastring says not the arsehole, you've warned her multiple times. If she wants to see her grandchild, she should call you and ask either to come over or take your daughter out somewhere. I would not give the keys back. And Cubby G Throw says, not the arsehole, why does this woman have a key and access code to your home? She is 100% the arsehole. Good locks make good neighbors. I wouldn't recommend giving anyone a key who doesn't live in your house unless you're going to be gone, except one person whom you can trust to not do this, like your parents or a friend. And Hazy Bop says, not the arsehole, you're entitled to your own privacy, and it should be expected for an adult to respect another adult's private and personal space. Showing up constantly and letting herself in, that's too much. However, I'd remember that your deceased wife's mother is clearly without anyone. Her only child is dead, her only grandchild with you. This can't be easy for her. You absolutely need to establish and enforce boundaries, but this isn't just an overbearing mother-in-law. This is a grief-stricken and lonely mother-in-law. Please try to come to a compromise for the memory of your wife and her daughter. Now, I turn this one to you guys. What do you guys think of this situation? What do you think of mother-in-law? What would you do? Let me know in the comments below. And our next story is from Kanar. Am I the arsehole for telling my girlfriend that she doesn't need to keep breast pumping? We have a four and a half month old daughter. My girlfriend always has been pro natural milk. I see the advantages of both natural milk and formula. When she was still on maternity leave, everything was okay baby was eating from her breast. Since she started working again, she also had to start breast pumping to keep up with her natural milk. She wants to do this so we invest in a nice lightweight pump. She gets permission from her work to take the necessary breaks, etc. However, she is keeping to a schedule that will optimize the flow of milk as long as possible. This means getting up at 6 a.m. and doing a final pump at 10.30 p.m. And she's dead tired and whining about not getting enough sleep. And honestly, just not fun to be around. Everything resolves about keeping that schedule. And last night at 9 p.m., I suggested that she'd skip her late night pump and get some sleep. I'd do baby's last bottle, as I often do, and she'd just have to go to bed. And I got an earful about how I don't care about the baby and some stuff about antibodies and that she's getting her COVID vaccine soon. She's in healthcare and that'd be good for the baby to get those antibodies as well. Been getting the cold shoulder since. Now, I'm probably going to make myself look like an ass to try and comment on this. Something that I know very little about, but I've seen previous stories about this kind of thing. And as far as I'm aware, you can't skip, <laughs> might be wrong here, you can't skip pumping like an accession because otherwise you get engorged and it gets really painful. And that's from what I think it is right. But so we're going to go straight to the comments otherwise, because I will just further make myself look like an ass. <laughs> But, so we'll start off with Queen Oreo saying, you're the arsehole. You can't just skip a pumping session. That's not how it works. If she skips, the milk is still there. Skipping solves no problems at all. Spindicina says, and quotes, and honestly not fun to be around. And then says, this alone makes you the arsehole. And Pinky says, you're the arsehole. If she just skips a session like you just suggested, she'll wake up in pain. Possibly having soaked herself and could develop mastitis. If you have a problem with her attitude from being tired, see if you can help out more by helping clean the pump parts, taking care of the baby so she can nap and rest. Boyfriending can be very beneficial for the antibodies she's producing. In the future, try bringing the baby to her to Twilight Nurse. And Jade Pumpkin says, as a mum that nursed, she's tired and no matter how tired she is, you should encourage her. If she decides tomorrow to stop pumping to support that, I nursed both my kids for a long time. Never did my husband discourage me. Neither of you are assholes. You are tired parents. Yeah, and that could be very true as well. Now I turn this one to you guys. What do you guys think of this situation? Is there a way of solving it or is the last comment right? They're just very tired from everything that's going on right now. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And our next story comes from, act less gay, am I the arsehole? Am I the arsehole for telling my boyfriend to act less gay when he meets my parents? Pretty sure we had a similar story recently. I understand that acting gay isn't really a thing, but you know what I mean. We're both 20 male. 
My parents are pretty homophobic, but they are trying not to be. They're both trying to learn and be comfortable with the idea of me dating a guy. They want to meet my boyfriend after quarantine is over. My boyfriend has a bit of a persona. People tell him he looks like a gay prostitute from a hundred years ago. He's a bit pretentious and he loves all the characters like Sebastian Flight and embodies a less dangerous version of them. Anyway, we're talking about him meeting my parents since they heard him trip over a cord in the background while I was FaceTiming them. Great first introduction and I asked him to try and act less gay when he meets them. That was admittedly a bad choice of words and he got pretty upset. So I tried to clarify there's nothing wrong with his personality or his appearance, but that my parents are already uncomfortable with the concept of gay people because they think they all act like him. Meeting him at a full social setting mode would just push them back 20 years. The thing is, acting gay isn't even a natural personality. I don't want to say I'm in the wrong because I'm literally asking him to just act like himself and not the show he likes to put on meeting new people slash at parties. He said that if my parents don't accept me, they shouldn't be in my life. It's not that easy for me. I love my parents. Am I the asshole? Another little short story there, but we're going to start off straight away with JL saying, you're the asshole. You're assuming that he would act gay as if he was at a party. You're assuming that he wouldn't be respectful. Just because he acts differently in a party and social situations doesn't mean that it'd be the same when he meets your parents. If you love your partner, you would do anything to be with them. Yet you want him to hide. You are supposed to love all sides to him. And Kay Ellie says, I get where you're coming from, but still going for a soft, you're the asshole. I see you're wanting to mediate in it, but it's not your boyfriend's responsibility your parents have shitty ideas about gay people. If your boyfriend is a character, I'm assuming that's part of what attracts you to him. You need to back him up, not throw him to the wolves. And Dangerous Plate says, oof, ouch, OP. That must have hurt his feelings big time. You need to apologize for that at least. I understand your concerns regarding your parents' response, but here's the thing. It's they that need to be on their best, least homophobic behavior to protect him. And maybe a few short and sweet FaceTime chats will help them get to know each other before the full-on in-person meetup. Gentle, you're the arsehole for the internalized homophobia. Give your boyfriend and parents a little more credit. An Antipodian rabbit says, oh man, I've had to have a conversation about what kind of behavior, humor, volume of voice, attire, topics of conversation would, would not be appropriate when meeting certain people to my other half. So the conversation you want to have is not uncommon. You just said it in the shittiest way possible. I think that if you'd approached this in a different way, you would have been fine. But asking your partner not to act gay is an asshole move. For that, you're the asshole. Apologize and you'll be one less so. Good luck with meeting your parents. Now, what do you guys think of this story? Let me know in the comments below. And our next story comes from a throwaway account. Am I the asshole for throwing my girlfriend's gay friend out because he was being inappropriate towards me? So my 24 male girlfriend, 23 female, who we're called Jess, and I've been living together for seven months. She moved in after she learned, so she's working totally online. We've dated for two years. Jess has a very close-knit friend group that she's been with since early college. One of the guys in her group, who we're called John, John is a gay dude and is the only guy in her friend group. John is very flamboyant and he has a history of saying things that are very inappropriate towards me. Like he will constantly say inappropriate things to me and about me. He constantly says things to my girlfriend like, be quiet before I fuck your boyfriend, as a joke. And that really grosses me out and makes me feel uncomfortable. He'll make jokes about the size of my penis and worst of all, he'll make a joke about if I've ever been with a guy which legitimately makes me upset. My girlfriend thinks it's hilarious. This came to a head a few nights ago. A few of my girlfriend's friends, including John, came over for the evening and I was out with them. They had a little bit of drink and John was being too much. I pulled Jess aside and told her that John was making me feel uncomfortable and that she needed to tell him to stop. She said they were just having fun and that I needed to lighten up, but she had still tell him to stop. She, in a joking way, told him I was feeling uncomfortable and that became a new topic of the joke. John then hinted I might be uncomfortable and defensive because I might be a little gay. This is when I drew the line. I'm not gay and I don't like it being implied that I am gay. I was angry at him and I asked him to leave. The night was pretty much halted. Jess and her friends tried to convince me to calm down, but I was done. After he joked about me being gay, he needed to leave my house. Eventually, he and all of Jess's friends left and she went off on me. 
Apparently all her friends were pissed at me too for ruining the night and accused me of being homophobic. Even my girlfriend said it came across as homophobic that I reacted so badly to him joking about me being gay. Am I the arsehole? Absolutely not the arsehole in this situation. In the pure fact that he crossed your boundaries several times, even then when you brought up your feelings, you got laughed at and joked about. So not only is John the arsehole in this situation, your girlfriend is a big arsehole as well, enabling this kind of behavior and making jokes about you. It's just not on in my opinion. But future muscle doctor says not the arsehole. You're not a homophobe for kicking out someone who constantly violates your boundaries. And my cabbage says, not the arsehole. As a gay man, I am so tired of people in our community acting like this, and it is especially common for younger gay guys. Being gay is not a get out of jail free card to act however you like and make people uncomfortable. I also despise guys who try to project their own sexuality onto straight men who aren't interested. Oh, he's not responding to my flirting. He must be in denial. He must be gay. You are straight, you're in a relationship. His behavior made you uncomfortable and you did the right thing and communicated your feelings to your girlfriend to handle. He is her friend. It is therefore her responsibility to deal with it. She didn't and in the process, she proved that she values her friend's feelings over yours. Nothing you did was homophobic and this is coming from someone who is gay as the day is long. A music girl's mum says and quotes, my girlfriend thinks is hilarious. And then says, you know what's not hilarious? Sexual harassment, which this is. You are not the arsehole OP, but your girlfriend and her friend John definitely are. And the dread pirate Jeff says, not the arsehole. I wonder what your girlfriend would think if you and your group of your guy friends got together and they all made sexual comments towards and about her. Close friends can and do joke about things like that, but you are not their close friend and you are just a target of, of what are to you offensive and sexist comments and insults. It's even worse that your girlfriend and her friends somehow equate not wanting to be the target of sexual jokes and being called gay as homophobic. Your girlfriend is the biggest asshole in all of this. She should have done a better job understanding your discomfort, but instead she just joined in on the abuse. Now, I turn this one to you guys. What do you guys think of this situation? Let me know in the comments below. Should we have one more story? I think we have one more story. My voice is holding up good. Usually I can only manage four stories and my voice is all croaky as anything and sounds like ass. But <laughs> it's not too bad at the minute. What do you guys think, huh? <laughs> Let's crack on with the next story. So, our next story is from a throwaway account. Am I the arsehole for throwing out my husband's food after how he handled our daughter's allergies? Throw away because I do not want identifying info on my main. For some context, my 35 female husband, 47 male, and I have a beautiful, lovely daughter, 11 female, who has quite a large number of allergies and intolerances such as shellfish, dairy products, tomatoes, eggplants, etc. We knew about these for years, but my husband still refuses to keep those products out of our house for some reason. We also divide the dishes equally. I cook and clean four times a week. He does it three times a week. So fast forward to the conflict at hand. My husband is a great cook, but one thing that worries and annoys me to death is the fact that he doesn't properly clean his stuff. And sometimes I end up having to order takeout from my daughter just to guarantee no cross contamination. So one day he decided to make lobster with potatoes, despite the fact that I stated many times for our daughter. Anyway, he goes and does it anyway. And then he says that the daughter can just pick the lobster out. I lose my shit and tell him that he shouldn't be doing this. Even if he had to, it should be limited and more careful, blah, blah. Well, he still did it. So I threw out the ingredients that my husband liked and my daughter couldn't eat. And my husband starts to throw a tantrum saying I'm a controlling asshole. And now I think he might be right about that, but I was also just trying to protect our daughter. So am I the asshole? Hell no, you're not the asshole. Husband is an irresponsible dick in this by the sounds of it. Wow, he's endangering your daughter in this situation. Telling her that she can just pick out shellfish like that's going to make any difference to the contamination of the food. What a moron. Oh, wow. Blown away by that one. And just had one of those mental stories that went on in my head about just seeing this family sat there, the daughter suddenly going into some sort of shock because she's eating the the food she's allergic to, and then husband sitting there with surprised Pikachu face. I mean, come on, man. Oh dear, let's check out some of the comments. This is too much. But Obadicta says, not the arsehole. Why are you still married to a man who repeatedly endangers your daughter's life? 
and beat black bloop bloop says, <laughs> not the arsehole, I love Reddit names, not the arsehole, picking shellfish out of a dish doesn't make it safe for people who are allergic to shellfish. Your husband shows a shocking lack of concern for his daughter's well-being. I see no problem with him having whatever food he wants for himself as long as he's serious about segregating them for the good of your child. But if he's not going to protect her, then you have to do it yourself. An even speech says not the arsehole is your husband waiting for your daughter to have a life-threatening anaphylactic reaction before he'd take this seriously. And the comments pretty much just go on and on like that. But what do you guys think of this situation? What would you do if your partner was doing something similar? Let me know in the comments below. Wow. A huge thank you to each and every one of you for taking the times out of your day to be here, to be involved with the channel. You know how much it means to me and you know how much of a difference you make by clicking that like button, by getting involved with the channel, commenting below. It really makes a huge difference. And your watch time, when you watch to the end of a video, I cannot express how much of a difference that makes as well. Thank you so, so much for doing you. It really does mean the world. And I will see you in the next one. Much love, guys. You have a great day now because you are bloody spicy so-and-sos and I love you for it. Bye-bye. <laughs>